Hey, welcome to the new video of Facebook advertisement. Now in this video, I'm going to teach you step by step how to create Facebook pixels and also use Facebook pixels when you advertise on Facebook. Now in this video, since I assume you have been following my previous video as well, and that's where the screen stops. So I'm going to navigate to the data sources and I'm going to click on pixels navigation button. Once I click on the na pixels navigation button, it says that uh, my Facebook business manager work just does not have any pixel and I need to create one. In order to create a new Facebook pixels, I need to click on add button. But before I do it, I need to teach you what is Facebook pixels. Now, Facebook Pixels is one amazing way of storing and keeping an information about all the website visitors who have visited your website in past. Imagine a brick and mortar shop where people come in, some buy, some do window shopping, do not buy anything, and they go out. In that physical environment, there's no way you can keep a track of their information so that you can retarget them when new product or service is introduced in your shop. Facebook allows you to keep a record of all the website visitors, provided they have a Facebook account. Whenever they visit your website, Facebook Pixel is a code that stores all the Facebook information about a visitor who uses or comes to your website. Now, let's be honest about this. Facebook has over 2.6 billion users. Now, 2.6 billion users means that every second visitor who lands on your website would probably also have a Facebook account. Facebook stores your information in cookies. That's what uh, the simplest of the explanation I can give here. And if that user visits your website on a back end facebook is recording your information uh, the little smirk here is because you probably would have come across this uh, amazing uh, news about ios 14 and ios 15 apple not allowing facebook to record uh, or keep a track of location of their users so there's a huge you know uh, uh, issue being going on there. Facebook Pixels records all the Facebook users' information who have visited your website. So in the future, when you advertise on Facebook, by selecting Facebook Pixels, which means that you want to retarget all those people that Facebook Pixel have stored, you can show your ad again to those people. When I say again, it means that previously when they landed on your website, uh, that was probably through a Google search engine or a recommendation by a friend or perhaps they have come from, uh, uh, from a social media uh, post or a video. But in this case, when they come back to your website, they probably are in a better state of mind to do business with you. So this is why Facebook Pixel is very important. Coming back to my screen, in order to create Facebook Pixel, I need to create an ad button here. I need to create my Facebook Pixel name, which is already created because my business name is Work Just Biz, and then Pixel is already added in front of it. Uh, I need to populate my website address. Now, this is very important because for you to use Facebook Pixel, you have to give Facebook your website address. In this case, my website is my freelance marketplace. So I'm going to provide my website address here and I'm not blurring this for you because uh, I want you to use my freelance marketplace by clicking on the continue button I'm taken to the next slide where I'm supposed to uh, set up my pixel now right so it says are you ready to set up your pixel now that you have created a pixel you need to implement some code on your website so I need to click on either of these two options the first says you can set up your pixel later or you can set up now. I want to do it right now. So I'm clicking on the second option. By clicking on the second option, uh, there are three 
choices I'm given. The first is I can select a partner program and I can add a code in there. For example, if I'm using WordPress, then uh, I can add a plugin, uh, Facebook recommends, and then I can add my pixel from there. But I would not recommend this. There are so many reasons I do not want to talk about that in a video. Uh, hint security. I've been doing this for a huge part of my life uh, in my main channel that's in Urdu that has got uh, over 300k subscribers. I taught my audience using Facebook pixels by selecting a partner integration only to find out that few complained uh, that the third party plugin they have used have compromised their uh, private information. So I'm going to skip this for now and I'm only going to select manually add code to your website. This is the best way. Uh, it's simple. It's easy. All you need to do is just copy a code which you see on your screen right now. By clicking on this button, uh, it turns the color from blue to green and the code is copied to clipboard and I am advised to paste this pixel code into the bottom of the header section just above the head tag. That's what they say. So I'm going to paste this on my website and see how it goes. Give me a second. Now I've just copied and pasted this code in my head account and I'm going to test if the code is visible on my website. So I'm going to populate my website URL and then I'm going to click on send test traffic. It is going to open my website in a new tab. This is workshops.com and uh, it's Facebook Pixel's way of uh, approving your Facebook pixels. So coming back, there you go. It says that uh, my account is active. Uh, my fa Facebook pixel code is successfully installed on my website. Now I'm going to click on the continue button. By clicking on the continue button, there you see it says that uh, I need to set up an event. Creating Facebook pixel is one thing, but creating an event inside Facebook pixel is another. For example, there could be multiple events. If you've got an e-commerce website, you want to track how many visitors have come all the way to a shopping cart. They have added a product in your shopping cart, but they do not have checked out. In this case, for all those shoppers who do not check out and keep the product in their cart, you might just be willing to get or gather their information for retargeting purposes. Same goes for, let's say, if you've got a sales funnel newsletter, if you've got a sales funnel landing page, if you've got a sales funnel for that matter, imagine you've got a landing page. On a landing page, uh, you're offering something for free. When people input their email address and their other information that's recorded in the form and they click on the add button or submit button, that's where you can set up an event that all those users who have clicked on the button, add me or submit or whatever the button is called, you gather their information, which means that you can retarget them when you advertise on Facebook and so on and so forth. You can apply this in your uh, case scenario. In my case, since I have a work chess website, I want to see how many people sign up as a freelancer and how many people sign up as a client. Because in this way, when I gather two different information, I can send them two different ads. Let's see how this goes. So I'm going to uh, walk you through the process and say that now that you have installed the pixel base code, you can use the event setup tool to track the actions that matter the most. Use Facebook event setup tool recommended, right? Uh, so I'm going to click on this option here and see what happens. It requires me to populate my website again by clicking on the button open website, a new tab will open. And there you will see a little dialog box appearing on the left hand side, loading as we speak. There you go. So I'm going to click on next button. 
I'm going to click on next button because it is just asking me to understand how the whole thing works. Now there you see multiple options here. I can track the events on my website. Now if you have paid close attention to what I was trying to explain as far as my marketplace, freelance marketplace, workchest.com is concerned, I want to track few uh, actions on my website. So I'm going to click on track a new button. I can actually track URL as well. I can track everybody who visits workchest.com. So I can, uh, there are two ways to go about it. First, I want to show you how you can track new button. So by clicking on this join now, that's one event I can track and uh, I can select few options here. Maybe I'm going to click on uh, contact, add to wish list, add payment, purchase, maybe initiate checkout or a lead. Yeah, that's a lead. Uh, don't include value. That's fine for now. And I'm going to click on confirm. So that's one way. That's one uh, event that is tracked on my website. The second is I'm going to click on join now. And there's another uh, option that is displayed as becoming a freelancer. So I'm going to click on track new button. And uh, in this track new button, I can actually click on post a project. So post a project is done by a client and I want to see how many clients post a project. Again, in a drop down to select an event, I want to click on purchase, uh, just giving it a name, right? And uh, in order to populate the value, I think I'm fine with this. I'm just gonna click on confirm button. So these are two options that are created. Now I want to track everybody who visits workchest.com. I need to click on track a URL. And in this case, I can track a page or I can track a URL uh, individual, which means that it contains or it equals. I'm fine with uh, populating my main domain name. And here I'm going to select view content. Uh, perhaps I'm going to give it a different name just to uh, since this is my pixel and I know how it works. So I'm going to click on contact. That's fine for now. And by clicking on the confirm button, three events are created here. You see, one is contact, which is the main URL. Then there's a lead join now. And then, of course, the employer section when they click on post a project. I can go on and add multiple instances here, multiple events here. But I'm fine with these three for now. I will click on finish setup and these are the three events I've created inside my pixel. By clicking on the finish button and uh, by giving this little information to Facebook that everything is fine, I'm good to go. This is how you create Facebook pixel and how you set up an event inside Facebook pixel. Now I'm going to see how the events have been created inside my pixel. How do I do it? I can do it by clicking on test events. When I click on test events, I can see my pixels. And how do I do it? I can do it by clicking in the open events manager. But before I do it, I want to refresh my page because right now it says Facebook pixel and it is red. And when I refresh my page, hopefully this will turn into green, which means that, you know, the event uh, are being recorded inside my Facebook pixel. And this also tells you that your Facebook pixel account is active. Now, in order to see the full activity, I need to click on open an events manager. It opens in a new tab. And on, on, on this new tab, I will see three events created inside my pixel. There you go. Loading as we speak. It's going to walk me through the process when I'm fine with this. Thank you very much. There you go. All three events created inside my Facebook pixel and the pixel is created inside my business ID, my uh, Facebook business manager called WorkChess, right? So that's how you create Facebook pixel. Uh, you need to go through the process here about uh, the display or a prompt box that, uh, you know, uh, you are shown here. But there's one last thing before you are able to successfully use your Facebook pixel. And that one last thing would be you need to make sure that your domain is verified. 
So in order to do, verify your domain, you need to navigate to brand safety. You need to click on domain and then you need to click on the add option. That's where you will be able to verify your domain in order to be used inside your business manager account. So I'm going to uh, populate my website URL here. I'm going to click on the add button. Uh, it says that uh, it needs to be without the prefix. So only workshops.com. Click on the add button. And uh, now I need to put this little code again in the header of my website code. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the process here. You can also download a file and you can upload that file on the root of your website host. So uh, that's a little tricky process. I'm going to go ahead and just paste this code in the header section. By the way, uh, as my code is being approved, I have pasted the code in my header section, but it takes a little while for uh, Facebook to prove it. Speaking about other options, these are the options. You can add meta tag to your HTML source code. You can upload an HTML file to your root directory by selecting this option. Uh, I'll be given a file to download. By clicking on this link, I will be given a file to download. And then I need to upload that file to the root directory of my domain, workchess.com. So I'm fine with the very first option, which is add a meta tag to your HTML source code. This is a prerequisite, a mandatory step required by Facebook Business Manager to make sure that your domain is approved, not only for Facebook Business Manager uh, purpose, but also for pixel purpose as well in the long run. Many people make mistake of adding Facebook pixel and adding events inside their Facebook pixel but they forget, but they're not aware about the uh, importance of verifying your domain. So I'm going to click on verify domain button for now. Let's see if uh, Facebook recognizes the code. It typically takes a little while, but there you go. So workchess.com is verified. In order to use Facebook pixel successfully, I think I have completed all the steps, starting from creating my Facebook pixel, adding an event inside my Facebook pixel, and of course, verifying my domain. Let's see how this whole thing actually works if I create an ad using Facebook Pixel. Now, in order to see if my Facebook Pixel is installed completely, by the way, you'll get very handful number of videos that go all the way to the very last process and show you how the Pixel can be selected when you create an account. The videos I've seen, People actually, you know, just create pixel and even inside a pixel and that's it. So here's one post and I just want to see if I'm able to advertise by clicking on the boost post. It opens a new dialog box and uh, that's where you need to provide information about your ad. I'm going to teach you how to create a Facebook ad in the next video. In this video, the purpose was to teach you how to create pixel and even inside pixel so i'm going to navigate all the way to the bottom and see if i can see facebook pixel and by clicking on the facebook pixel there you go the ad account here is facebook business account and uh, it's my personal account as well so if i select my facebook business account and if i select pixel there you go if it was not working you would see a yellow uh, alert box displayed here that you need to set up your domain or your Facebook pixel is not set up correctly. This is it. What else do you need?